The war in the Middle East is only escalating with time, creating tensions around the world regarding oil. We're discussing that. I think, I think that would be a little... Anyway. Joe Biden's comments ended up sparking a surge in the price of crude oil, up by 5%. Welcome, this is Najma Minhas. Thank you so much for joining me today. As tensions rise in the Middle East, all eyes are on Israel's next move. Following Iran's large-scale missile barrage last week into the country, speculation is now growing about how Israel will respond. Retaliation is on the cards for sure, but what kind and how large? Will it be a tit-for-tat between the two countries just signaling to keep their honor? Or will it be a large enough to ignite a conflagration in the Middle East in order that Israel pursues its escalation dominant strategy of remaining the most powerful player in the Middle East? Few players are more anxious than those in the oil market. Up to now, we were all looking at the Middle East as observers and feeling empathy and even anger at what was happening. But most of us were not directly affected. If, as is potentially expected, Israel takes out Iran's oil facilities, then we're all about to be plunged directly into this crisis. Last week, United States President Joe Biden fueled rumors of an Israeli strike on Iran's oil facilities. His response, we're discussing that in response to a, a question from a reporter, was enough to send Brent crude oil prices rising by over 5% in minutes. They reached over $78 um, per barrel at the time. Would you support Israel striking Iran's oil facilities, sir? We're discussing that. I think, I think that would be a little... Anyway. Now, unfortunately, he didn't outright reject it the way he had the day before regarding uh, when a question was asked about strike on uh, Iran's nuclear facilities. Support an attack on Iran's nuclear site. The answer is no. Day before that already, when Iran had fired its missiles, oil prices had already risen around 3% on the day. Now, after criticism last couple of days, he's tried to diminish the importance of his words. And during a press briefing on the jobs report, he said that he, if it was him, he would be thinking about alternatives to striking Iranian oil fields if he were in Israel's shoes, adding that he thinks that Israel has not yet concluded how to respond to Iran. The Israelis have not concluded how they're, what they're going to do in terms of a strike. That's under discussion. I think there are, if, if I were in their shoes, I'd be thinking about other alternatives than striking oil fields. There's been some news that's come out in um, Israeli newspapers that suggests that the Biden administration is offering compensation to the Netanyahu government for not attacking certain targets in Iran. Uh, the reason is, of course, that Biden is afraid with elections around the corner that this war should not get extended at this point in the Middle East. I hope you will like and share the video if you're enjoying it, as with your engagement with the channel does help it to grow. Um, please subscribe if you are enjoying the content on this channel. The sudden spike in prices comes after months of relatively calm oil markets. Despite the escalating war that we saw between Israel and uh, Hamas and the direct confrontations between Hezbollah and Iran and Israel, crude oil prices have remained surprisingly steady. Now, even with the relentless attacks by the Iranian-backed Houthis, which have disrupted shipping routes in the Red Sea since the war in Gaza started in October 2023, once again, the oil markets remained largely unaffected. Now, much of this can be attributed to the OPEC Plus uh, community keeping production in check, which is despite this lackluster demand for crude oil has made it easy for them. OPEC Plus includes oil production from 10 other non-OPEC countries, which includes Russia, which is the world's thirdest, third largest producer, Mexico and Kazakhstan, among seven others. But this uh, soon could change. Uh, an Israeli strike on Iran's oil infrastructure may significantly disrupt global oil supply, especially if key facilities like Kerg Island, an epicenter of Iran's oil exports, is hit. It produces over 1.7 million barrels a day. After the Iranian firing of around 200 missile attacks into Israel, which affected several of its facilities, details of all have not been released by the Israelis, but the Neviton Air Force Base in southern Israel, the Mossad headquarters, and a military intelligence base north of Tel Aviv are among those hit. It is believed that Israel is not disclosing how badly it has actually been affected for obvious reasons of keeping its power in the region intact. 
Israel has long defended itself through a doctrine of retaliatory action, which President Eisenhower angrily characterized in 1955 after the Israeli raids into Gaza and Jordan as more like a head for an eye rather than an eye for an eye, which is uh, uh, the uh, saying by uh, Jesus Christ. PM Netanyahu's office has released his video saying that there would be payback. Iran has done a great job today, and it will pay for it. The government of Iran does not understand the ability to protect ourselves and the ability to kill our enemies. Sinwar and Def did not understand this. Nasrallah and Muhsin did not understand this. And maybe there are in Tehran those who do not understand this. They understand. We will stand in the law that we have. Who will kill us Israelis have said they will target oil production facilities inside Iran and other strategic sites. Israel feels it did not show enough escalation of power last time round. Iran's missile and drone attack on Israel in April was answered by a very limited Israeli strike against an S-300 air defense battery in Iran at the time, which ended the direct exchange of um, attacks between the two countries. This time round, they've promised a much bigger response. In turn, the Iranians are relying on Washington to keep a check on the Israelis, or at least to moderate them, given that it's less than one month into the US election, and their assumption is they would not want to risk a regional war in the Middle East. However, whether Netanyahu has the same objectives as President Biden is another matter. In a press uh, briefing, the same jobs report uh, press uh, briefing, President Biden was actually asked about Netanyahu's objectives vis-a-vis -vis the American elections. Biden responded angrily that no other president had done more than him to keep Israel safe. Non, non, non are his words. No administration has helped Israel more than I have. None. None. No. However, if the Israelis decide to go with the hits on Iran's oil production facilities, a strike on Kurg, which I mentioned earlier, uh, produces around 1.7 million barrels per day out of Iran's total 2.5 million barrels per day, would cripple Iran's revenue stream. Oil exports contribute around $35 billion to its economy, but it would come at the cost also of spiking global pri oil prices, including here in the United States, just weeks before a crucial election. Kirk Island is Iran's main oil export terminal, and it handles over 90% of the country's crude oil exports. Iran's total oil production is set to stand between 2.5 to 3.2 million barrels per day. Iran is the seventh largest oil producer in the world with a global market share of around 4%. Now, alternatively, Israel might target Iran's domestic refineries like the Abadan facility, which produces gasoline instead. This would hit Iran's public hard, but have less immediate impact on global markets. Now, the public is already suffering from high inflation, rising unemployment, and a collapsing currency. From the Israeli perspective, targeting Abadan would also be strategic, since Abadan has one of the world's largest oil refineries and plays a key role in Iran's domestic refinery capacity. The refinery produces around 400,000 barrels per day and contributes significantly to Iran's domestic fuel supply rather than its exports. If Iran retaliates further to any Israeli strike, the stakes will rise even more exponentially. Israel has threatened it would then for sure consider taking out Iran's nuclear and other strategic facilities. Well, I would expect that they would level a very serious attack in Iran against a number of facilities, possibly their oil industry, but conceivably their nuclear facilities. Iranian President Masoud Pejikin, uh, speaking at the Asia summit in Doha last week, said that Iran would be ready to respond and warned against silence in the face of Israel's warmongering. Any type of military attack, terrorist attack, or crossing our red lines will be met with a decisive response by our, all our armed forces, he said. So what are Tehran's options? Well, the easiest at this point could be, um, sorry, I should say the easiest at that point could be that it could target Saudi or Gulf oil facilities, just as it did in 2019, when the attack on its key refinery at uh, Abqaiq briefly shut down more than 5% of the global oil supply. This would widen the conflict further 
uh, and further shock these oil markets. It has implicitly threatened to do so as well. Iran has warned that if Israel supporters intervene directly, their interests in the region would be targeted. It is in this light that the recent meeting in Doha during the, uh, during the Asia summit between the Saudis and the Iranians should be seen. The Saudis and other Middle Eastern players said that they'll stay neutral in any conflict between Israel and Iran and want to patch up their differences with Iran. There's only one reason why they would have this meeting straight after the Iranian missile strike of Israel, and that mean it has the implicit approval of the United States. Now, what would be the more dangerous move for Tehran? Iran could attempt to close the Strait of Hormuz. It's a critical choke point through which 25% of the world's oil flows. And the Strait is a vital passage for oil exports from Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, and Saudi Arabia. If Iran closes the Hormuz even temporarily, global oil prices could surge to around $100 per barrel or even more. And Iranian hardliners have often asked the government to do this. This would disrupt oil supplies for much of the world and cause immediate economic turmoil, since 25% of the global oil passes through Hormuz. The consequences of this would be catastrophic, and Iran knows this. Many countries, including China and India, which rely on, Adi uh, on Iranian oil, would face supply shortages, but to a large extent, they're also covered because they're buying increasing amounts of oil from the Russians, unlike the Western countries who have Russian sanctions. And as a result, if global shipping lines are thrown into chaos, they would face higher fuel oil prices and this would strain their already very fragile economies. Iran is unlikely to take this step given the consequences and it knows that it would very quickly drag in the United States into the conflict, which it really doesn't want to do so. Oil price jumps due to geopolitical events are nothing new. The 1973 oil embargo caused prices to quadruple in just a few months. It led to years of global energy instability. During the 1990 Gulf War with Iraq, oil price uh, surged by over 30% in one day, and then prices remained high for months on end. Even in 2019, when the Saudi Abaik uh, attack happened, this briefly pushed up prices by over 20%, although in this case, markets recovered relatively quickly. But today's oil market is much more complex. A strike on uh, Iran could disrupt not only Middle Eastern oil, but also the global energy supplies, which would lead to long-term price hikes if retaliation spiral out of control. Higher oil prices mean that consumers would have much more than just expensive fuel. They lead to increased transportation and production costs. The prices of goods and services would go up globally and inflation would spike as businesses pass on these costs to consumers. For the, many of the world economies that are already grappling with high inflation and slow growth, this could lead to even slower growth and higher interest rates once again, which would worsen the economic outlook for millions of people. Even with ample spare capacity from major producers like Saudi Arabia, activating that reserve depends on how severe the disruption is. Until then, the world could be in for a bumpy ride in the oil market. And let's not forget, oil price hikes ahead of the United States election would have huge domestic political consequences. Rising fuel costs along with inflation in everyday goods could shift voter sentiment and challenge the current administration's handling of the foreign policy and economic issues. Uh, there is early voting in many United States, and that means that the people could actually be voting on this in the next couple of weeks as we come up to the election. For Israel, the timing of such a strike may be carefully considered. The US government would likely be cautious about its involvement in any conflict that sends gas prices skyrocketing, as I mentioned just before the voters head to the polls. Now, with tensions escalating, the global oil market is on an edge. How Israel responds could send shockwaves far beyond the battlefield, hitting economies and consumers worldwide, while influencing the political landscape of this upcoming United States election. Thank you for watching today. If I can ask you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content.